Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. Um, I'm sorry that it's been a while. Um, I found myself in a new job, um, which has taken up quite a lot of my time. Uh, I've been very tired. <laughs> you know, having real employment rather than doing freelance uh, has kind of killed me a little bit. Um, so yeah, I haven't really had a chance to get online. but. I've got a day off today, and I figured, you know, I'll do something for you guys. It's been a while. So here we are. Today's tutorial, we're going to cover level streaming. Um, it's one of the more technical things. I know that I normally show you guys uh, stuff that's, you know, more arty, and I've kind of gotten away from the technical aspects a little bit. You know, I, I focused on shaders and particles, and I always said that I'd show you guys some of the, the underlying systems. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now level streaming. Uh, what's it for? Well, um, if you've got a huge open world or sections of levels that you don't need continuously loaded, what we can do is we can use level streaming to load and unload those levels or sections of levels um, when we need to, rather than have them always present. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head up to window and open up the levels window. You see here I've got my levels. Yours is probably going to be bigger. I've resized mine just because it doesn't need to be huge. With persistent level, this is the level that we're currently loaded into, which is the third person example map. I'm going to click this little levels tab, create new, and I'm going to call this stream underscore one. Now you can see that that's added this underneath the persistent level. If we click the little hide menu, you can see it hides stream one. I'm going to add another stream underscore 2 and I've got stream 2. Now you notice that stream 2 is little blue that's because this is the level that's currently selected. When you've got more than one level inside of a persistent level you've got to make sure that you select the level that you want to work in. Over here in the world outliner you're going to see everything for every level that's currently loaded and visible so just make sure that you're inside the correct level. So if I open up stream 1 level by double clicking on it what I can do is I can drop a cube in, there we are, cube, nice cube. If I click this little toggle visibility, you can see now it gets rid of the cube. And over here we have cube mesh, which disappears, well cube actually, disappears when we hide the stream level 1. So if, you need, if you've got quite a lot of stream levels and you need to find something specific and you know it's inside of a certain level and you want to use the world outliner and you can't remember the name of it because obviously you can just search, you can hide things to get rid of specific streams inside the levels. In this menu we've got multiple things we can do. We can quickly get to the open level blueprints for each of the streamed levels. See this is the stream level 1 blueprint. We can also lock the levels so we can't change anything. So now you can see I can't select this cube because I've got this locked but if I unlock it I can select it again. And then we have these little save icons here. If it's got a little pencil on it it means that something's been changed if it doesn't, it means that it's in the same state that it was last time it was saved. Finally, we've got the little chip for color. Uh, this is just so that you can give individual colors to specific levels so that you can color code them. It's good for notes and communications and things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select stream 2 and then I'm going to select an object that's in a different level, which is the persistent level. I'm actually going to drag a copy of this over but because I'm inside stream level 2, it's actually going to put that in the level 2 stream. It's not going to keep it inside persistent level. He says. It's just because it's too dark. You can't say, there we go. It's still there. <laughs> that nearly made me look a fool. Like, oh no, it's not there. Yes, it is. Alright, so. How can we use these? Well, we can load and unload levels inside of blueprints. Or constantly. So... In this level tab, if we right click a level, we can say change streaming method. We've got blueprint or always loaded. If we select always load and press play, that cube's always there. If we change it back to blueprint, the cube's not there. Okay, so it's working as intended. We're going to select the persistent level. We can quickly close that down, head to blueprints, open level blueprint, and minimize it because I actually need to create a trigger. So, trigger box trigger. We'll just lift this guy up a little bit, resize him so that he's easy for us to hit. There we are. Go into the level blueprint, 
with the box trigger selected, right click, overlap, and then right at the top we've got on active again overlap with the trigger box already selected because we have it selected inside the level. So we've created a reference for overlap. We're going to right click, get player character. From other actor, we'll say equal object, plug player character into here because we only want our player to we want the player to be the only thing that's able to actually stream this level for us. From here we will branch. Then from true, load stream level. Inside level name, we know what we want it to be called, so we're going to say stream underscore one. Of course, here you can use variables, you can even use arrays if you want. Um, I have a system set up in one of the games that I'm working on um, where I'm streaming in random levels um, just so that no two plays are exactly the same. It's a bit of a complicated system. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to walk through that one with you. Uh, we just need to take this box here, make visible after load. We'll compile. We'll press play. We'll walk in. And you can see that it's loaded the cube for us. So, what we can then do is we can just expand this a little bit. We'll head in there. And then inside the level blueprint, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to say overlap on actor end overlap let's see if we can do it with the same check because we only want the character to be able to trigger it branch this time unload level stream or stream level we we'll call this stream underscore one Now when we walk into it we'll get the cube and when we walk out the cube will unload. Okay, so that's an entire level being loaded and unloaded just by walking into a box. Now you don't want to keep both the load and unload inside the same box. Uh, what we could do instead is we could say use this as a uh, way in and out. So imagine we have a door. You wouldn't want objects to blink in front of uh, players obviously because it's going to look a little bit ugly for them to pop up so normally you'd hide it behind a door or around a corner or something so that there was something they could see as the levels loaded um, so what we'll do instead is we'll say uh, we'll create a variable level one loaded that's a boolean we will drag this out uh, and we'll set level one loaded to yes and before we do the stream, we will branch again. Condition is level loaded. If level one's not loaded, we want to just break that off. Blah, come on, there we go. If level one's not loaded, then we'll load it and set to loaded. And then obviously here, if level one is loaded then what we will do is we will deload the level and set the level to unloaded. That way we can control things with variables. So when we walk into the cube for the first time, it will load the cube. And <laughs> it will make me look a fool. Why are you making me look a fool? Ah, yes, because we're still on actor overlap, end overlap rather. So what we want to do is we want to, come on, you cheeky devil, oh, of course, we're just going to use that. So we don't need this check anymore. Instead, what we're going to do is just use a single cube. So you can tell I'm rusty, but you going to work too much. No. Right, so there we are. <clears throat> and when we walk in, it will load. And if it's loaded and we hit the box again, it will deload. So you can see how that would work for entering an area and then leaving an area if I actually walked into the box. But obviously, you would hide where the level is being streamed um, because you don't want us, the player to see this. 
So can we do the same? Uh, yes we can. We can have this for as many levels as we want. We could add multiple levels onto the same streaming uh, box or into the same blueprint. You don't have to do these in level blueprints. You can create blueprints specifically for loading and deloading levels. So this time we're going to do open level blueprint with the second box selected. Overlap. And now what we can do is we can just select everything here except for the level one loaded variables. So we're going to make a new one. Paste these down. Plug them in so that they match. Change the level names of both from level one to level two. We'll duplicate our variable. Right click and duplicate. We'll quickly just change this to level two loaded. And here we will plug this all in like so and set to loaded and set to unloaded and now you can see if we were to walk to the stairs and turn around it hasn't worked <laughs> What have I not plugged in correctly? <laughs> no, that's all fine. Have I put this in the wrong level? I don't think I have. Nope. You can see it's clearly not working for level two. So let's just see where that's going wrong. So it's going all the way through, but it's not showing the level, as you can see there. So the blueprint's working, but Did I typo the name of the level? I did. Look at that. I've accidentally called level 2 Steam level. And some of you will have noticed that straight away and have been laughing at me for the last few minutes. And some of you were as stumped as I was. <laughs> See, this is why naming conventions are uh, important. There we are. See, I missed out an R, and that's how simple it is to break everything. Well, you can see it's working. We're loading in the two different levels. We can have both levels loaded at the same time. And we can keep level 2 loaded and deload level 1. As you can see. And you can do that with absolutely everything in the level, including lighting. Uh, lighting, you have to rebuild for each level. So if you notice, as soon as I load level 2 there, I get the object needs its lighting rebuilt. If you just rebuild from the persistent, it's not going to build inside level 2 as well. What you need to do is head to levels, select level 2, and then build the lighting inside of that one. So, hopefully that helps some of you guys understand level streaming, um, and the importance of not leaving out the letter R in the word stream. There you are, so I will see you guys next time.